allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councillor Peterson. Here. Councillor Geisler. Here. Councillor Nelson. Here. Councillor Hoschild. Here. Mayor Boucher. Here. Announcements. Uh, this is the time that councillors can make um, announcements about anything they would like as needed. Uh, does anyone have any announcements tonight? You're going to announce the obvious? I, I have one. Um, you know, uh, Got a little script here. Uh, there is a tradition in giving a key to the city to individuals and groups who've made important contributions to an entire community. As Natalie Peterson steps off the council tonight as part of her move back north, it's worthy to note that she herself has been a key to the city of Hamilton. Her dedication and passion as a city councilor over the last eight years was key in aiding many council-led projects to fruition, such as the Essential Wellness Center, Boulder Trail, and the Section 23 sewer line. Both the Hermantown Marketplace and the Hermantown Square are entire city's overall marketing, branding, and imaging. Her efforts were key in areas beyond the city council as she was critical in helping Hawk Pride school referendum successfully pass. At each turn, she's opened doors and created opportunities for others. Even though she's moving back to her home, we will hope she will forever think of Hermantown as her own. We have a small gift of appreciation as you finish your time on the council. It's our way of giving you the key to the city. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <thanks. laughs> Now you're going to make me cry. <laughs> oh my gosh. As soon as I start talking, then I start crying. Um, I just want to thank council, mayor, uh, staff, the community. It's been just a joy to raise my family. We've been here for 22 years, raise kids. I've been as involved as I possibly could be, um, hopefully in a lot of positive ways. Um, this group has done amazing work in this community, um, making decisions to hopefully better the community um, for the right reasons. The staff is amazing, one of the best. I think we all hired most of you, so I hope we <laughs> feel that way. Um, but it's it's an, it's a special community to be a part of, and um, I'm you know, I'm from, I'm from International Falls originally, so I'm a Northern Minnesota girl. My dad was a sheriff for 27 years. Um, I know what it's like to be raised in a, in live and raise a family in a small community. And um, this one is a little special in its own. Um, it's vibrant, it's connected. Um, the values that are here within this community, the support, um, I've watched Unfortunately, some sad situations with certain family and friends that have this community's rallied and supported without even question. And at the same time, they've gotten together and celebrated one another. Um, and that's something to be very proud of. And I'm very proud to have been a part of it. So thank you. We have no public hearings for items at under item five this evening on the agenda. Communications, uh, Kevin, uh, we've got two highlighted here. The first one, 22-94. Is that the same as something that was just handed to us from the Mr. last Miller? meeting was handed out to you guys? Well, we just received one tonight. Oh, new one. Another page. This is new. Uh, looks like it's been ad added on to. Okay. There's some additions on here. Yep, on the second page. And then we have one from PNR Properties that's in record. Uh, we had presentations in depth at the pre agenda meeting. I'd like uh, them to be given a summation at this meeting, Mr. Orm. Your, do you have a summation of the debt services budget for 2023? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, tonight I presented to you 
kind of synopsis of what our 2023 debt service budgets will look like. Overall, the city has about 33 million in total debt. That amount has reduced um, in 2022 because we have not issued any debt this year. Um, next year, we already have plans to issue probably two more million in debt to redo Richard Lindgren Road and to redo the Hermantown Road Bridge. Um, we pay about 3.75%, sorry, 3.75 million annually to service our debt, that 33 million. The other piece I presented to you tonight was the sales tax fund itself. So that sales tax fund uh, covers about 73% of our debt of the city is covered just by sales tax. Now sales tax has certain uses that we can only use it for by the legislature. Um, so I did include the sales tax budget. We budgeting, 3.3 million in revenue and about 3.3 million in expenditures in 2023 from that sales tax fund. Questions on debt service or sales tax. Now we'll bring the rest of the budget to you um, later. We've also brought some other pieces to you and we'll, the overall budget gets approved in December. Thank you. Any questions from council? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And now, um, Mr. Wickland, do you have a short synopsis of your presentation on the Community Recreation Initiative? Yeah, thank you, Mayor and Council. We covered uh, in pre-agenda both uh, actions that are about to be taken on the communications side, as well as uh, information that'll be uh, put out community-wide around education around the upcoming referendum around local option sales tax, referred to as the Community Recreation Initiative. Uh, a citywide mailing is hitting mailboxes and has already started uh, in terms of uh, bringing folks up to speed. The biggest Q and A's that we've had through that process um, to help people be clear and understand what they're walking into when they vote, whether it's an early voting or an election day, uh, is that it is three separate questions. Um, they're not linked together, so one, two, or three can pass. And regardless of uh, one, two, or three passing, it's a half percent sales tax increase no matter what. It'll just be the time uh, that we enact that tax. Uh, it is different than other taxes in that it does have a hard sunset due to our new regulations around local option sales tax at the legislative level. Uh, and there's more specificity in terms of what those sale taxes can be used for. Kind of like Kevin mentioned, um, the, the new referendums around this are hyper-specific. So the questions that folks are encountering are a bit laborious on the uh, ballot, but it outlines total amounts and specific amounts for any projects associated with this. Um, we'll be doing our third information session on Wednesday here. That'll focus on the arena project. Folks have already attended um, uh, the Fickner Park reimagining project, as well as the trails piece, and those videos are online for folks who didn't see those meetings. We'll have two more public meetings, at least in October and November, uh, and multiple tabling sessions, uh, some at the high school and then some others as folks kind of call and, and need. So so folks, the, the recreation initiative will just be a lot more prevalent, I think, in the community in the coming months leading up to the election. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, next on the agenda is public discussion. This is the time that individuals can address the council about any item not on the agenda. We ask that you limit your time to three minutes per person. Now, a lot of you are here for certain items on the agenda, and we will have a public discussion available when we address those issues. Is there anyone who wishes to speak to the council about any item not on the agenda? If so, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. That also invitation also includes to anyone attending the meeting online. If you wish to speak to the council, please lead with your name and address. Is there any? We do have uh, folks online um, who are able to unmute themselves at any point during the meeting if it's okay. here or whenever it comes up that they're interested in speaking to a subject. Are there any hands raised? Not at this time. Is there any public input on and general discussion for the city council this evening? This will be the last opportunity for general public discussion in this meeting. If anyone wish, wishes to speak to the council, please state your name and address for the record. That is on the agenda, sir, and we will have a time for public discussion during that item. 
So once we call that item, we will have public discussion on that, as well as the other ordinances and motions, with the exception of the first reading of the fee schedule. So if anyone has any general public discussion, please do so at this time. Otherwise, we will move to the consent agenda, which is the minutes approval or correction of the September 6th meeting and general city warrants in the amount of $356,991.55. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilor Geisler, second by Councilor Hoschild. Roll call, please. Councilor Geisler? Aye. Councilor Nelson? Aye. Councilor Hoschild? Aye. Councilor Peterson? Aye. Mayor Boucher? Aye. Next is our first ordinance for a second reading this evening. This is ordinance 2022-10, an ordinance recommending that part of the Hermantown City Code be temporarily suspended to further study the earn a buck requirement for the Hermantown City 2022 bull hunt. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Councilor Peterson, second by Councilor Nelson. This is, uh, would put the earn a buck program that we use on hold for one year to study its effectiveness. We have been asked to do this by bow hunters and we've been told by the DNR and other agencies that are in the know that the, uh, earning a buck is not uh, helping increase the deer population or call the deer population as we needed to. So uh, the population is apparently down right now and by suspending this and studying it for a year, we're gonna look at the effects and look at continuing uh, the suspension or reinstatement of it again next year. Does any, do any counselors have questions or comments? Is there any member of the public that wishes to comment on ordinance 2022-10, either in chambers or online? If so, start with your name and address. Is there any public input on the temporarily temporary suspension of the earn a buck requirement? This will be the last notice for public input on ordinance 2022-10. Roll call, please. Councilor Nelson? Aye. Councilor Hoschild? Aye. Councilor Peterson? Aye. Councilor Geisler? Aye. Mayor Boucher? Aye. Next is the second reading of Ordinance 2022-11, an ordinance amending Title II of the Hermantown City Code by amending the official zoning map, 4747 Hermantown Road, parcels 395-0010-0700, and 395-0010-07050. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Councilor Peterson, second by Councilor Hauschild. Mr. Johnson, would you please give us a, a short description of this ordinance? Great, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Uh, before us this evening, it's a rezoning request for a 27 acre property located between Hermantown Road and Anderson Road. This is the former Ingwalls uh, site that we're familiar with. Uh, this property has in the past functioned as a, a more of a commercial establishment, although it was in an R3 zoning district. Uh, the functioning of Ingwalls predated the city and hence was uh, essentially grandfathered in as, a, as that type of use in that area. Uh, when this application came in, uh, staff looked at not only this existing property, but also uh, adjoining properties in that area. Uh, what staff was finding is there is either commercially zoned properties, i.e. at the corner of Haynes Road and, um, and Hermantown Road, that's the Accurate Auto as well as the BP Auto Station, and then other adjoining properties, all those zoned R3 uh, residential do have commercial characteristics associated with those. 
uh, particularly the Salem Lutheran Church, which also includes a daycare, uh, the Kids College Daycare, the Estates Treasure Building, and uh, the Keene Creek Townhomes does have some certain uh, multifamily uh, type of density associated with it that is commonly seen in, in some commercially zoned districts that way. Uh, this information was presented at the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, previously back in August. Uh, at that time, staff had been recommending the approval uh, or at least a recommendation to approve from the PNZ. Uh, the planning and zoning uh, did have some concerns, particularly is if uh, PNR properties did not pursue uh, this property. Right now, all that we're looking at is a rezoning request. There's not a particular uh, application for site development associated with this. Uh, but at that time, planning and zoning was concerned that uh, if there was a rezoning to the property and, and PNR did not go forward, that we would have a commercially zoned property. Uh, as I had mentioned previously, uh, this property, although it is vacant, does have certain char characteristics associated with commercial zoning, as well as other properties in that zoning district. Thank you. Do any councilors have comments or questions? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just comment that uh, my employer holds contracts with PNR properties, the applicant for this rezoning, and therefore will be abstaining from this vote. And also not participating. And also not participating. Any counselors have any questions or comments? I wanted to ask a question of Mr. Johnson and, and to make this clear because someone mentioned it either during or after our last meeting. And that is uh, the part that's asked to be rezoned is only a portion of the former Engwalls property and not the part that has been previously approved for residential land unit development? Uh, actually, we are going to rezone the entire 27 acres, which does include that previously approved area. Okay. Uh, basically, that was the northern eight acres of this property. Uh, staff tries to uh, avoid essentially split zonings of properties. So that's why uh, we're pursuing at least looking at the both of these parcels that way. That previously approved uh, planned unit development, uh, which happened uh, in between 20 and 21, uh, that is still uh, an approved project and could go forward underneath uh, a commercial zoning as well. Okay. As a planned unit development isn't allowed in any zoning district within the city. Thank you for clarifying that. Now uh, we will open this up to public discussion. Uh, we're gonna have public discussion possibly both in chambers and online. I'm going to ask that everyone start with their name and address if they wish to speak, and the people in chambers can approach the podium and speak into the microphone. We normally have a three-minute limit on public input. Uh, we've never held that hard and fast to it, but if we start getting to six to ten minutes, we might ask somebody to, to sum things up a little bit. And also, uh, if anybody has anything that they would like to deliver to us in writing, they can give it to the city clerk and it will be distributed to us. Uh, is there anyone in chambers that wishes to speak to the council? If so, please step forward and state your name and address for the record. Thank you, Mayor, Councilors. Uh, Dante Tomasoni uh, with PNR Companies 5546 Morris Thomas Road in Hermantown. Uh, Councilor Mayor, uh, I have uh, submitted with our application a, a set of um, a set of PowerPoint slides that uh, will not fit within the four minute time limit, but they are available if uh, at the discretion of the council or the mayor later on uh, for rebuttal if needed or any subsequent testimony if requested. Um, tonight's hearing, uh, tonight's hearing, council members, it's it's a zoning hearing. It's limited in scope uh, to that of rezoning a piece of property from R three to commercial. The piece of property is currently operating in a commercial capacity and it has been for 30 years. The piece of property is two city blocks from a major commercial vein in the city of Hermantown and just over a mile away from the Hermantown Major Commercial District. It sits contiguously next to a commercial operation that's next to another commercial operation that's across the street from a commercial operation and is itself sitting uh, across the street from a commercial-like operation. All within this corridor, the R3 zoning of these operations came in under existing uses. An existing use uses zoning, uh, an existing use zoning does not change the commercial nature of the track, of the land, or its operation. It is an exercise of municipal efficiency when the city was created. 
It's a way to allow an operation to continue without forcing an owner to have to reapply for a different zoning. It's also, and most importantly, a function of not removing a property, personal, or operational right of the, of the owner during the zoning process. Again, for 30 years, this has been a commercial operation site and is currently a landscaping company is operating out of this site. For the reasons stated above, and solely for the reasons stated above, this zoning application for the rezoning commercial should be granted. Now, of course, there's a reason we're here today uh, other than that rezoning it is our application so that PNR companies can redevelop the land in a way that is good for the community, good for the area, and will greatly benefit the citizens of Hermantown with minimal impact to the land, the neighboring properties, and all on a reduced footprint. The Planning and Zoning Commission appeared to have a crucial, a crucial message that ruled the day during the application there. That message was, if there's no project, um, what does PNR do? If PNR doesn't build here, what happens to the project? Um, two answers were delivered as part of the record by the city administrator. One, if PNR doesn't build there, rezoning to a commercial district, it does not open Pandora's box. It can't just put a meatpacking plant there if we don't end up building a, a, a building. Uh, the CIDP Hermantown statute is section 520.02. It, it prohibits any non-conforming use that doesn't apply with that zoning requirement. I think there's like 50 requirements. There. So um, that is a protection for the community if for some reason we didn't we did not build there. Um, there's no nuclear waste facility, pig farm, menards. Um, the slippery slope argument here, it just it's simply inappropriately applied and it's not applicable today. Two, there is a project. We have we have invested significant time, thought, money, and architectural resources into creating the project. Um, I could share with the council and the community today if it's requested later, but due to time limits, I'll, I'll talk about the nature of the project otherwise. But this project is before us because there is a need. There is a real strong need for housing in this company. Um, Sears is hiring 400 people. Sears just announced, actually just today, a 189,000 square foot project called the Innovation Center of Excellence. Well, that doesn't fit the Hermantown community. I don't know what does, but um, Ascentia is having trouble recruiting because of a lack of housing. Uh, these are nurses and doctors that take care of the people in Hermantown and, and the people that live here too. And they're having trouble bringing them to the community because we don't have enough housing. Um, and you know, property taxes are going up and property taxes are going up at a significant rate because there is a lack of supply in this community. This project will increase the supply, it will help stabilize prices, it will help stabilize the community and stabilize um, housing in this area. Uh, the initial investment into this community in this project is uh, $30 million anticipated for phase one. If phase two goes through, it'll be an additional $30 million. That will, that will put PNR's initial investment in the city of Hermantown up to nearly $100 million if you want to combine with area. We care about this community. We want to be a part of this community and we want to invest everything we can into this community. Um, now, even with the scope and the limited scope of this hearing, um, you know, what the reason we're applying for is one floor. And the reason is, is because going up with wood is significantly less expensive than going out with concrete. Additionally, going up with wood reduces the footprint of the building. So now we have a smaller footprint of the building. We preserve green space and we preserve the buffer between the communities, the single family homes in this area. It keeps everything commercial going towards Haynes Road. So that being said, we have those two main, two main reasons for application day. One, our project is befitting of this community. We plan to go taller because it reduces the footprint of the project and it allows for more green space. Two, this is our model. Um, if, you've, if you've had a chance to see Ari, and I invite anybody to do so that hasn't, um, it's how we make our buildings. It's a podium on the main level, it's indoor parking, it helps the quality of life for our tenants. And on top of it, it is one of the most energy efficient buildings in potentially the country. Um, our buildings house all of the plumbing and heating systems in that podium level. And in, inside that podium level, you have 50 degree heat that circulates year round. We have a 170,000 square foot building in Superior that was $400 to heat last February. We are energy efficient, we care about the footprint, and this is design we use. The other part about this building that's unique, um, that takes care of the citizens, that takes care of the neighboring properties, is that we are building into the hillside. So the measurement from the lower part of the building is going to need the commercial zoning. The measurement on the back side of the building into the hillside will be significantly lower to the trees. It will be closer to the 40 foot requirement 
of the R3 zoning. So the actual impact of this rezoning is minimal at best. Um, our demographics that attract our building, our tenants are young professionals and they're retired Hermantown community members, typically 55 plus. Um, we are almost half and half between young professionals and, and 55 plus with some scattered in there. And so um, we have a high quality of living that we provide in this building. This is going to be a market rate building. There's not affordable as affordability aspect to it. It is going to create quality of life and it's going to do that for the citizens of Hermantown. Now, we've listened to the concerns of the community, and I just wanted to address a few um, before we go. I think I'm probably getting near my buffer time, so I will go fast. Uh, number one, the school concern. Um, with our demographics in our buildings, um, ARI has 12 families out of 147 units. 11 of them moved from Hermantown into ARI. We have one family that moved from Duluth. So we will create a significant community benefit without stressing our school district. Uh, number two, traffic. So we have a ratio of 1.7 units or 1.7 cars per unit. At 140 units, I know how the mass shakes out. I can tell you as an experience and, and somebody who has sat in Airy and watched the cars go in and out, so I can say this with full confidence today, that the actual impact on the roads is not substantial and it doesn't affect the daily lives of the citizens. I, had, I sat there almost an entire day and never saw more than five cars at that light on a one way in and a one way out. And the reason is, is because when you have our demographic, people don't just leave out the building at the same time. You have young professionals that go to work at different times. You have 55 plus that maybe never leave. And we have work from home. We have a lot of work from home mobility in our, in our, in our units. So it will not be felt on the road like you'll hear some of the concerns. Um, there's no evidence that apartment buildings reduce property values. High quality buildings actually have positive effects on the neighboring neighborhoods. Um, and finally, the concerns about heights and views and seeing the building and looking at the building. The closest, the closest property to the building construction on the north property that is actually going to be just to our development, not the eight acres to the north, has a hundred feet of trees between the back porch and our property, hundred feet wide pine trees, and that's not even tall. And the last view you'll ever see is when you're going north on 53, and you're looking at areas you cannot see it. And that building is not built into the hillside. Those are the things that we know the community thinks about. Those are the things we know the citizens think about. And that's why we've designed this project to have a minimal impact as far as aesthetically on the community, but have a positive impact when it comes to property taxes, potentially over a million dollars a year to the community and, and how it's gonna help with our housing crisis. Uh, thank you, counselors. I'll be available for any questions if needed. Thank you. We may have some later, but can I, can I just ask one question? Um, I apologize, Dante. Um, if you could just talk about, I know there's an intention of kind of adding a little bit of public benefit to your plan. I don't know if you're prepared to speak to that because uh, I know your location with the, the new trail that is heavily used by our community. Can you speak to that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, so we're, we're designing the project around the trail, of course, um, so that our tenants can use the trail. We're also planning on putting a parking lot, a public parking lot, and adding public parking space for the community. Um, we're entertaining, uh, we're entertaining pavilion type settings uh, near there, and that's kind of still in the drawing phase. Um, but yes, we want the public to be able to drive through, use the project. And with that, there'll be some of the green space that the public's going to be able to use adjacent to the trail if they want to stop, have a picnic, whatever they like to do. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Anything else from council? <laughs> What's that? Okay. Who would like to be next? Anyone in the room wish to speak to the council? Please step forward and state your name and address for the record. I guess I can start things here a little bit. Um, Thank you. My name is Dave Miller, 4793 Anderson Road. And I, I handed out to the counselors, uh, the front, the first page and a half is from the uh, last meeting, but then there's additions that I added to it and hope you can read it uh, here. <clears throat> and I, I have to say, first of all, that I would really like to see Rod be able to sell his property and, and retire. Um, and I also um, applaud PNR for the quality of work and the, the thoughts and the research that goes into this. But I come to you as a neighbor. And I hope I represent my neighbors um, as part of this meeting here too. And, and a couple of thoughts here. The Keens Creek development is included with commercial properties, but is actually a residential development with single story and some walkout basements. 
I don't see it as an extreme commercial type of property. There's a single story daycare that is hardly commercial and has a low impact on the neighborhood. And the single story antique store is barely, is barely open and very low impact. Um, these are grand, well, the daycare is not grandfathered, but um, um, not nearly the impact. Um, and I, I noted, uh, actually, I, today I read the agenda and, and it was very, very interesting reading the agenda, kind of seeing some of the things that come out in it. And I, I urge those in the community to, to, to read those kinds of things here too. But as I read the agenda, there was a reference to area one and, and in the, this property is in area one. It goes from what I understand back to the 10, 12 year old rezoning or um, uh, comprehensive zoning, but it does not include commercial use as I read it. Um, uh, the, the current PUD is the northern eight, eight acres um, is included in the commercial rezoning. And would this allow for more 65 foot hot, tall units? Um, as I understand in the current conversation, there's, there's phase one, but phase two adds a second. If you look on the uh, agenda, it does show pictures of, of those. And I say this for the community members here. Um, but with, with that, um, that area included in the commercial, it does allow, as I see it, it allows for another area instead of the 24, 25 residential properties that were originally planned there. Um, it, a, a point of interest is, is that the zoning meeting, an FI Salter representative stated that if the commercial zoning was not allowed in this development, that they would walk away from their project. What would happen if PNR walked away from this whole thing after it was rezoned? I mean, the, 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 certainly the potential is there. Um, today, I drove around the block of Anderson Road, Haynes Road, uh, Hermantown Road, and Oakerstrom Road, and only looked at the properties in Hermantown. And as best I could come up with, there's 51 residential properties around that block. They're all appear to be private households. And assuming an average of three people per household, that would be a total of 153 souls that live in, in those houses. Add in Queens Creek at 44 units with two per household is an additional 88 for 200, a total of 241 people that live within our neighborhood. Um, compare that to 140 units with an average of 2.4 souls equals 236. Multiply that by two and you get 672. Add in a potential phase three and you're over a thousand residents in that block. Um, they speak of phase two and phase three third certainly is a potential, especially if the Northern, no, we already know that the Northerly eight acres is zoned commercial. Um, reading some of the notes in the agenda, it states that R3 allows for 10 usages, 10 different types of usages. Commercial allows for 56 usages. What could those be? I mean, we don't know what they are, but it's kind of like vote on it now and find out later if, uh, if things change here. Uh, according to the zoning details, uh, comparing R3 to commercial, and this again is in the agenda, the setbacks and lot sizes allow much more density per lot on any development as a commercial property versus uh, an R3 property. So what are the limits and what is the potential for that? Um, more than anything, as a Hermantown resident, speaking with my neighbors, we need zoning changes in Hermantown that groups residential property with residential property and commercial with commercial. Right now, we see this random plopping of commercial into residential areas, and, and I'm not sure that the, the citizens benefit, and certainly the atmosphere of Hermantown does not. Um, looking at the area development, uh, it's right on the corner of a busy major highway with traffic lights. This development is located on, on two local roads with limited visibility. Can they handle the 200 to 400 vehicles twice a day that would be coming and going from the property? More than anything, right now we have the opportunity to make some decisions um, that, that can affect the whole community in the long run. Um, I did not include this in my letter, but 
getting a current comprehensive plan that delineates commercial, residential, and the other zoning, I, I think is very, very important. Uh, if Eric has time to do it, I mean, that's, that's probably the most important thing. But our opportunity to do something right is right now because we can't change it in the future. So I urge you to contemplate what's going on, think about it, and uh, try and do the right thing for the citizens of Hermantown, especially the residential ones. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Anything from council? No, thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, name and address, please. Brad Slane, 3296 North, Little Alden Lake Road. I've owned and operated a commercial business on this property. Uh, I've been here since uh, April of 1974. Uh, been involved in ownership since 1987. And so we've got uh, some history uh, uh, since I've been here, but the beginnings of Engwalls really go back to the late uh, uh, 1800s, 1888, something like that. I think retail actually started on the property in maybe 1930, um, and it has grown from there. Uh, the operation obviously has been commercial, uh, and, and, and what we're talking about tonight, I think, just tells me that we're trying to be consistent with, uh, with what it has been uh, for a long time. I'm selling the site uh, to PNR. Uh, I have a contract, uh, have uh, earnest money, uh, um, and hopefully this, uh, this project uh, will go forward. Uh, in my getting to know PNR since the contract was signed last June, June of 21, uh, they are, uh, to me, some real quality people. Uh, we've all seen the kind of project that uh, they've done here in Hermantown, and we've all heard stories of other projects that, uh, that they've done. Um, I'm glad, from my perspective, that, that PNR is interested uh, in, uh, in a project like this. Rezoning the site, from my perspective, is not non-conforming by any means. Uh, as I've said, we've operated a commercial business there for a number of years. Again, I've been there for, I'm, I'm in year number 48. Uh, we were here, uh, Engwalls was here prior to uh, Hermantown becoming um, a city. One of the questions that came up at the planning and zoning meeting, and I believe came up uh, even last week, is traffic. And, and you know, let me tell you a little bit about traffic that we have generated uh, as, uh, as we have operated. Um, uh, we've operated a number of departments uh, on that property, retail floral, which most people uh, know us for, a garden center activity. Uh, we've operated a corn maze uh, for nine years. We've got a number of other departments, interior landscape, exterior landscape, um, a number of things. The garden center, as an example, uh, in the months of May and June, would generate 4,000 plus transactions each month. Uh, retail floral, which is not garden center, uh, would generate probably 10 to 15 uh, drive-in, walk-in customers on a daily basis. Uh, we also had uh, uh, employees, and depending upon the time of the year, it could be from 25 to 60 employees uh, coming and going um, off the property. Uh, uh, the corn maze, uh, when that operated the 10, 11 weeks out of the year, we would have between, depending upon the year, 5,000 to 7,500 people uh, come through the corn maze. So that says roughly that on the low end, it might be 184 vehicles coming in and out every day, excuse me, uh, to corn maze weekends when that could be 275 cars uh, coming in and out uh, when the corn maze is open. I think that there was really only one time where we created a problem, and that was during a fall fest that we had that we had 1,500 people on one day, and people were parking on Hermantown Road, and it uh, it was uh, it was a problem, but that's it. I think that's the only time that I've ever heard that uh, uh, that uh, that we've had any kind of an issue. 
I support it is self-serving. Everybody expects me to say this, and 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 I do. But I believe uh, uh, in uh, in what PNR is trying to do. I support uh, what they are doing, uh, trying to minimize the footprint on the property. The conversations actually go back uh, here in Hermantown to 2014, 2013, where uh, where I came in and when worked with Hermantown planning and zoning on what would be acceptable to Hermantown. Um, I've, got, um, I've got pictures, I've got drawings from 2014, 2017, 2019, and things have changed uh, in, uh, in those, uh, whatever that is, uh, eight years. Uh, and, and with what PNR is presenting for the rezoning, it is a smaller footprint than what we have been talking about uh, uh, for uh, those uh, those eight years. Um, I've got Hermantown. Uh, uh, Hermantown's important to me. And uh, excuse me, <laughs> this, I didn't expect this. Hermantown's important to me. I've been here again for 48 years. Uh, I am proud. Uh, to be part of Hermantown and pr proud to have had Engwalls uh, and, and what we have accomplished over the years in being hopefully a good citizen uh, here in Hermantown. Um, um, I would not be selling a piece of property for a project that I didn't think uh, was going to benefit Hermantown. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to speak next? Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Beverly Donaldson, 3713 Keen Creek Lane. The last name again? Donaldson. Thank you. I'm sorry, could you say your address too one more time? 3713 Keen Creek Lane. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. My husband and I have been residents of Hermantown for nearly nine years. I walk the trail five days a week belong to the Y and serve as an election judge to do my part to support the community. We were drawn to Hermantown for all the reasons listed on the website, primarily country living and a small town community feel. It is unlikely we would have purchased had it been known at the time of the zoning change being planned to commercial. We have been advised that emotions and feelings have no place in aspects of zoning changes, then perhaps the web site verbiage needs to be revised. It is my understanding that in another situation, the mayor did voice concern that emergency services are being stretched with the requested modifications made at that time. It would appear that in this situation, council's main focus is increasing the tax base for Hermantown without foresight regarding the impact affecting roads, road maintenance, police coverage, volunteer fire protect protection, crowding of the schools. Plus, the impact a commercial zoning change could make on the real estate taxes for homes in the neighborhood is unknown. Walking along Hermantown Road to access the new border trail system is precarious at best due to the lack of sidewalks, extremely narrow shoulders, plus the hills, curves, and cars driving in excess of the 40 mile per hour posted, particularly in the winter. Albeit, I understand that zoning changes do not dictate attention to this type of detail. However, simple common sense does. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else in chambers that wishes to speak to the council? I'm Diane Langley from 3719 Keene Creek Lane. I did send um, you letters in the past couple of weeks uh, telling you about my uh, concerns about the rezoning of this 27 acres. And I don't care to go over all nine because I'm sure you've heard many of them over and over again. But I did want to reiterate my last comment to you. It was delaying this rezoning until the 18th month study is completed, I think is prudent. For the future plan will certainly designate better sites for multifamily units where roadways, environment, public transit, transit, and walkways would be considered. Possibly this study could include other um, options for this land. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
next. Hi, my name is Tammy Johnson. I'm at 3884 Okerstrom Road. I know you're voting on this tonight. I want you to please keep in mind that your planning and zoning board thought this project was too big. They unanimously voted against it. The citizens here tonight that you represent are asking you not to vote with Kina Properties zoning request. Please consider the people that you're, the people that you are, the citizens that you're here representing for us. Please keep that in mind when you vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers that wishes to speak to the council? Please state your name and address for the record. Alex Bushy, F.I. Salter, 800B West Railroad Street. Uh, my company has the PUD for the single family homes on the northern eight acres. Um, we're in support of this project, support of additional housing in the community because it is well needed. Um, PNR is a great company. They've done a great project in Hermantown. They're Hermantown people. I think it's a good option to have a developer that's committed to a community to do that. Our project um, is struggling because costs are high. Uh, partnering with a group like PNR on infrastructure could potentially save our project. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Mary Miller at 4793 Anderson Road. Last name again was? Mary Miller. Miller, okay. Yep. I've lived in Hermantown all my life. And, um, you know, I was talking about the traffic, which Mr. Celine, you know, talked about too. But it, it has changed. That for our whole, our whole neighborhood has changed with different traffic patterns that have happened. Um, now I have to sit at the end of my driveway to wait for cars to go by. So the, the traffic has increased both on the Anderson Road um, due to whatever roads they can't use, but, and also on the Herman Town Road as well. And that is, that is a concern, you know, um, which I wanted to say. And also, um, I know these buildings are beautiful and they, they want to, to have it zoned commercial so they can be, build high. Well, when you walk by there, all the other commercial places in that area that we're talking about are low profile. And to me, you know, to see something built high is going to be, you know, just not a part, you know, just not a part of our neighborhood. And then I wonder why is it in our world, and maybe none of you will like what I'm going to say, but why is it in our world that big money always wins out and benefits a few and does nothing for the for the rest of us. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers that wishes to speak to the council? Your name and address, sir? Captain J 477 Anderson Road. Um, I think I probably just real brief here. I'll echo, or echo a lot of what all my other neighbors have pointed out. Um, the gentleman from Angles, you know, he mentioned traffic, but we have to factor in that's seasonal traffic. That's not every day people living there going up and down the road. Uh, the PR representative, he talked about our our places bring in. I believe he said fifty percent are retired, fifty percent are young people moving in, but he claimed these buildings are helping the whole community. Well, half of them are already retired. They're not working in the community anymore. They're just living here, which is fine. I'm not, nothing against that. So. 
So I think just the increased traffic, like mentioned, the uh, the zoning committee already turned down this idea. So I just ask that the city council factors that in also along with all of our concerns. Thank you. Is there anyone else in chambers or is there anyone online that wishes to speak? If anyone on the online setting would like to speak, they can unmute themselves and just say their name and address. We do have a small handful of folks still online. We'll just give that short opportunity for anyone online. And if someone is in chambers, just state your name and address and we'll get going with your input. My name is David Johnson, 4792 Anderson Road. And really, I'm just another voice to support. My neighbors here that have spoken already, there isn't much that I could really add that they haven't said, other than to say that I support what they've said. My wife and I walk, we live on Anderson Road, we walk either around Orchestrum, Hermantown, Haines and back, or we go over to Stebner and back. We've altered our walking pattern. We go down Orchestrum Road and back because we don't feel safe on either Hermantown or Anderson, given the traffic. So I think it is a factor and it's a study that should be done in the neighborhood to see if it would support this business. And then I would just ask that you guys be strategic about the growth in Hermantown. We're going to have growth. People want to come here. I'm not debating that. I'm not, I wouldn't fight that at all. I think, I think we live in a great community, but I think you need to be strategic and have a city plan for what we're doing. If we had had a city plan at the time we added the walking trail, we put a, would have put sidewalks on Anderson and Hermantown when we read those roads, but we didn't. I have six grandchildren that I walked on that trail. It's not safe. So I need, I think you really need to consider that. I think you need to consider the voices that have been spoken. Uh, PNR gave a great presentation, well thought out. Um, I have a question. Is the property on Ugstead for sale? Hey. Uh, of which property on Augusta are you speaking? The building itself, I know that they own a residence next door that they bought that has a for sale sign in it. I understand, or what I've heard is that it's an apartment building complex itself. So, just another voice of support for the community. Hope you plan you. Mr. Johnson, there may have been some confusion on the Mugstead Road property with a house that they purchased next door that does have a for sale sign at it that is owned by PNR. Yeah, it's called by somebody the apartment building. No, it, may have been. I, he's, he said that it's okay. not. I, I would trust the owner. Okay. But uh, there is a for sale sign on a house next door. Anyone else in chambers or online that wishes to speak to the council, please state your name and address. First one up gets it. Yeah. We've, we've got time for everyone. Four seven seven four Anderson Road. I've spoken to you before at the other meetings. Probably don't want to hear from me again. I don't want to speak again. But one thing that has been left out is that I was told that the, the Hermantown is looking at making the Hermantown Road uh, business corridor. Is that correct? I have not heard any plans in that direction. It, I think <laughs> I think there may be a possibility in the future if commercial development was moving into the area, but I I don't think there are any immediate plans. Glad to hear that because I was told that by- Let's ask Mr. Here. Johnson. Yeah, let's. I believe what she may be referencing is this could be a study area as far as a comprehensive plan, given the nature that there are already some existing commercial uses and commercial like uses in that area. Okay, so with, with the existing uses, being grandfathered in, some of them, and some of them being commercial, this may be studied in the new comprehensive plan. That is correct, yes. Okay. And then I do have to voice support for getting a good comprehensive plan going with citizen import. Uh, you said about a year and a half it would take to get a plan like that. But well, what we're doing right now is we're updating the ongoing comprehensive plan 
Uh, it should take two years, Eric, to to complete. We're a little bit behind schedule on that. We would like to do it every 20 years. It was last done in 2000. I also am not against a development. I just need the appropriate size. But on the comprehensive plan, do you have citizen input or? There, there will be a time for public input when the comprehensive plan process goes through. You'll watch for public announcements for that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And one, we had one other person in the room that wanted to speak. Hi. My name is Crystal Andrews. I live at 3847 Arthur Lane in Hermantown. Um, I just wanted to bring up the fact that I walk those roads on Hermantown and Anderson quite often. Um, my father lives at 4852 Anderson Road, and I grew up there. Um, I would just want to make mention that um, oftentimes Hermantown PD will sit in my father's driveway or right along there running traffic control, um, catching speeders. Um, it's already traffic is a problem on Anderson Road. People are speeding. There's no sidewalks. Um, I'd like to have a study done on how much traffic um, is being run by Hermantown PD on Anderson Road, please. Is that the one at the intersection of Anderson and Oakerstrom? No, it's right. it's further down towards Stebner. Okay. 4852 Anderson Road. I think they run it at 4851 Anderson Road is what they do for traffic. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more person who would like to speak. Please start with your name and address. Good evening. My name is Dave Allison, 3735 Keene Creek Lane. My interest is, that, if possible, some clarification in the process. Uh, it's my understanding that the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission voted against changing this parcel to commercial. If the uh, council decides to support the zoning change to commercial, the question is, will there be limitations to the scope of the development, or could there be significant changes? Um, I'll defer it to that and question when you're done to Mr. Johnson. My last comment, if my, as a commercial pro parcel, uh, this land's highest and best use will be increased by a zoning change to commercial. How will this all be monitored? And I don't know that I need an answer tonight. Uh, well, I don't know that there is an answer tonight. Mr. Allison, I think we can get a short answer from Mr. Johnson here on what would happen next were this to pass or in any commercial zone where a business wants to locate. Eric? Great, thank you. Um, the This did appear before planning and zoning. Planning and zoning is an advisory board to the city council uh, in most issues. Um, the planning and zoning uh, is a proving body in a handful of things. One of those is what's called a commercial industrial development permit. That's assuming a property is zoned commercial. So um, if this parcel was to be rezoned, if an application came in for the use as PNR uh, has proposed or any other type of commercial that is allowed under the commercial district, uh, there would still be a public hearing at the planning and zoning. Uh, there'd be notices sent out to property owners uh, adjacent to the property to be able to attend that public hearing and, and state uh, any questions, comments, concerns at that. But there is, uh, once again, regardless whether it's R3 or commercial zoning, there is a process that uh, the city moves through for the review and comment period associated with projects. And at that time, then the uh, commercial plan for the property would be disclosed? Upon an application, uh, yes, there'd, there'd be public notice to adjoining properties. There would be a meeting at the Planning and Zoning Commission for that. So we don't need to wait to see it built to see what it is? No. There's an approval process that everything goes through. That was my question. Thank you.
Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to the council on this matter? If so, please state your name and address. Hi, Kim Parmeter, 5590 Stark Road in Midway Township. My business is at 5094 Miller Trunk Highway in Hermantown. Good evening, Councilors, Mayor Boucher, and Administration. My name is Kim Parmeter. I'm the President and CEO of the Hermantown Area Chamber of Commerce. I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of businesses and future business in our community. I know this evening's um, meeting is about the ordinance. I want to speak tonight to what it could mean. Lack of quality market rate housing is a key workforce issue for many businesses. I've heard from several employers, both pre and post pandemic, that housing is and continues to be a major challenge in attracting and retaining talent right here in our area, impacted enough such that major plans have been altered to reach talent in different markets, which means we lost jobs to more competitive communities. According to the Minnesota Chamber Foundation's 2030 report on a framework for economic growth, we have some work to do in our Minnesota communities. Aging populations and low birth rates, they certainly aren't helping. Competitive communities will need to deliver on childcare, digital connectivity, and necessary housing to remain relevant. These are foundational elements of a community's vitality and growth. We need to strengthen these assets in Hermantown. Unfortunately, Minnesota's housing market is not producing enough affordable housing for homeowners. In 2018, the Governor's Task Force on Housing uh, their report found that Minnesota needs to enable private sector building of 300,000 new homes to stabilize prices and keep up with demand this decade. So new strategies are clearly needed. City Council, the request for development will be coming to your agenda over and over and over again. I urge you to welcome it. These are people who seek the opportunity. They see it. They are willing to take the financial risk to move our community forward. Continue to make Hermantown a desirable place to not only work and live in, but to do business in as well. Our chamber truly applauds the efforts of the city of Hermantown for their willingness to listen to and learn about ways to help address this issue and for what it's already done. We also applaud the efforts of PNR companies in their ongoing pursuit to provide additional, much needed quality housing for our region and really truly appreciate the excellent work they've already done in our community, most notably at Ugstead and Highway 53 with the Airy Complex. Now it's the home to more than 100 individuals, 200, I believe. Um, it's truly had a ripple effect in our housing market in the past year. In regards to any project, we respect a fair process whereby all the steps are followed and all stakeholders have the opportunity to have their voices heard, including the voice of business. We further believe that a well-planned community gives businesses and residents the best chance to succeed and create economic stability and new opportunities for generations of Hermantown residents. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to council? If so, please state your name and address. Paul Johnson. 3884 Orchestra Road. Under R3, you still can put a housing development in there. You don't have to go big. Why is the city trying to make this area a commercial corridor? We already have the Hermantown Marketplace, and there is property for sale up in that area that you can develop. What is so special about this property that you keep changing ordinances for this property? Zone C, commercial zoning, King Creek setback property sizes. Once you go commercial, you can change planning and zoning and you can change those ordinances again. You know, what stops you? Change them before. So I ask you not to make it commercial, keep it R3, you still can develop it. 
We're not preventing you from developing. We just ask the size, the quantity, the trap, the danger to our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, do we have any hands raised online? Uh, we do not have any hands raised online right now, no. Okay, we will ask one more time for public input, both in chambers and online. If anyone wishes to speak to the council, please state your name and address. Miller, 4793 Anderson Road. It is zoned R3 and it can be built on. I would like to see it built on as an R3 instead of a high thing up in the sky as it, if it were zoned commercial. I know it's going to be developed, but looking at all the other businesses on Hermantown Road, they all fit into that. They all fit into that area. And to put a big high apartment building would be, I don't know, I think it'd be just kind of disheartening. You know, they still can build, but build within the means of our neighborhood where, you know, where we all live. Thank you. Thank you. Please repeat your name and address. Uh, still Beverly Donaldson at 3713 King Creek Lane. Thank you. My comment is that I have no question that their building is fantastic and gorgeous and all perfect for everyone. But it's not plunked down in the middle of a community that's already majority of which is residential. I think that should be a consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? anyone online if there is nothing more we will close the public comment period and we will move to a section that we rarely get to and that is uh counselors again have an opportunity to ask questions and make comments is there any questions or comments from council Anything that needs clarification? With that being said, we will move to a roll call. Councillor Hoschild. Aye. Councillor Peterson. Aye. Councillor Geisler. Abstain. Councillor Nelson. Aye. Mayor Boucher. Aye. We will now take a short break in case people want to orderly exit chambers uh, you're all invited to stick around for the rest of the agenda it's getting so we're gonna end the break and move along to the second reading or the first reading of ordinance 2022-12 an ordinance amending the hermantown code of ordinances section 270 fee schedule we will have further description at our next meeting when we have the second reading and a vote and we will allow for public input at that time <clears throat> next is resolutions Resolution 2022-114, a resolution to adopt the proposed property tax and proposed budget for taxes payable in 2023 and scheduling a truth and taxation hearing. That hearing would be on December 5th. We have a motion. So moved. Second. second. Again. Sorry. Motion by Councillor Hoschild, second by Councillor Geisler. Mr. Orm, do we have any further explanation needed here? I'll give a short one, Mr. Mayor. Go right the council annually, uh, second meeting in September, we adopt the preliminary proposed property tax levy. We're required to give that to St. Louis County by the end of the month. And so we're um, bringing that forward to you tonight. That amount is $7,606,333. <coughs> it's a 6.91% increase over the total levy um, of the current year. The effective tax rate next year will decrease 2.62% under this uh, proposal. 
if you guys uh, adopted tonight, you can still reduce it between now and the uh, truth and taxation hearing, December 5th. Uh, it cannot be raised though. Thank you. Yep. Any questions from council, mm -hmm. comments? Is there any public input on the proposed property tax and proposed budget? Actually, yes. I'm sorry. I know oh, you said that, but I just had a question. Okay, so we're, this is the preliminary, when is the official vote on it? December 5th. December Truth 5th. Truth and taxation De hearings, December 5th. You can okay. take action that night or you could wait one more meeting and be okay. separate to take final action. Got it. Thanks. Any other questions? No. Okay. Any <laughs> public input, either in chambers or online? Any public input on this matter? Last opportunity for public input. Roll call, please. Councillor Peterson. Aye. Councillor Geisler. Aye. Councillor Nelson. Aye. Councillor Hoschild. Aye. Com uh, Mayor Boucher. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> resolution 2022-115, resolution establishing an, establishing an absentee ballot board for the 2022 general election. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion by Councillor Nelson, second by Councillor Geisler. Um, do we need an explanation from Jackie on this? Or if is, she would like, this is she has this, her three this, word. This was also done. Pretty, you know. <laughs> go ahead and do your three words. Same as primary. There you go. <laughs> Thank Just required to pass the resolution. We passed one for the primary, repeating it for the general. Same exact board serving. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? Any public input, either in chambers or online? Uh, anybody not want to be on the board that's listening online? Is there any public input on resolution 2022-115? Last opportunity for public input on the absentee ballot board. Roll call, please. Councillor Geisler. Aye. Councillor Nelson. Aye. Councillor Gahashtow. Aye. Councillor Peterson. Aye. Mayor Boucher. Aye. Resolution 2022-116. Resolution authorizing the City of Hermantown to partner with Minnesota Trout Unlimited on a grant funding request associated with the Elkerstrom Road culvert at Keene Creek Park and contributing $35,000 towards the purchase and installation of the culvert. Do we have a motion? Motion approved. Second. Motion by Councilor Peterson, second by Councilor Nelson. <laughs> Mr. Orm, we need a little extra. Mr. Johnson will give us a. Mr. Johnson will do that. And I'll try not to be overly wordy as I usually am. Um, Thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, the gist of this is, is this is a grant opportunity that Minnesota Trout Unlimited has identified for the replacement of one of the city's culverts. Uh, initial discussions back in February was looking at the city would be responsible for uh, the entirety of a project could be upwards of 350,000. Uh, this grant opportunity uh, would change that where the grant would cover 90% of that cost and the city be responsible for 10% of that project, essentially $35,000. Uh, this has been a great partnership so far between ourselves, uh, the county and Trout Unlimited with all the work they've been doing. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? Hearing none, is there any public input on this resolution? Is there any public input on resolution 2022-116? Last opportunity for public input on this resolution. Roll call, please. Councilor Nelson. Aye. Councilor Hoschild. Aye. Councilor Peterson. Aye. Councilor Geisler. Aye. Mayor Boucher. Aye. And next we have an opportunity for a motion to recess. But I would like to defer to one person <laughs> to allow them to make that I motion. I forgot this was the last one. I really gave yeah. Yeah. knuckles for well, that. Well, you got to give them to me again, I guess. We have a motion for recess. I am very pleased and um, to have a final motion for recess. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Motion by Councilor Peterson, her last, and a second by Councilor Hauschild. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.